All right, everyone, in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the solubility and the different types of uh, solutions based on the solubility. So solubility is going to be defined as how much solute you can dissolve in a given amount of water. So here, we're just going to be focusing on water because that's going to be your most common solvent. And obviously, you could have uh, uh, different types of solutions where you have different solvents in there. But you know, for the most part, in Gen Chem, you focus on... Uh, just the water as your solvent. And here, we're going to be more or less focused on your solid solute. And I'll have a separate session where I talk about gas solute in water. Usually, it's you measure 100 milliliters of water or 100 grams of water, which is going to be the same thing, and how much solute you can dissolve at a given temperature. Solubility is temperature sensitive. You, if you increase the temperature, your solubility also goes up, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So how this process really going to work? So suppose I take some KCl, which is potassium chloride, and I'm going to add some KCl into this beaker, so I got this big chunk of KCl in there. So what's going to happen, this solid KCl is going to start dissolving. So initially, when this KCl is kind of broken into the ion, so you're going to have this broken into K plus and Cl minus, you, the, the rate of dissolution is going to be higher than the rate of recrystallization. What that really means, at the end of the day, once your solution becomes saturated, you can very well have some K plus and Cl minus combining together to make your KCl solid back in there. So your overall reaction in this particular case is going to be KCl solid. Once it starts dissolving, it's going to break into K plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. As the time goes by and your more KCl is going to start dissolving into this given amount of water, and at some point when you have enough KCl dissolved in there, the rate of dissolution is going to be equal to the rate of recrystallization, or you can also call the rate of solidification, where at that point you can't really have more KCl dissolved in water. So I can go ahead and write down uh, like an equilibrium process here where I have the K plus and Cl being made, but then I have this little bit of solid left in there and they're kind of going back and forth in there. Uh, so that's like in a dynamic equilibrium where the rate of dissolution equals to the rate of recrystallization. Now, at that time, you can't really increase the concentration of the KCl in that given amount of water unless you maybe heat it, then it's a different story. But at a particular temperature, the concentration or how much KCl that has been dissolved in the given water is not going to change. All right, so that's going to be called in a saturated solution. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Based on how much solution or how much solute you can dissolve in a given amount of water and how much you have dissolved, you can char characterize your solutions in three different types. So the first one is called an unsaturated solution. So un unsaturated solutions means you don't have enough solute present in there compared to your equilibrium position. So equilibrium position where you know you can't really dissolve any more solute in there, that's when you're going to be your equilibrium position. But for an unsaturated solution, you're going to be way behind. You can still dissolve more uh, solute in there. If I take in a generic example, so think of you are eating in a pizza, and when you're eating pizza, and if you only eat, suppose, like five slices, uh, that means you can still eat some more. So at that point, you are unsaturated position. And that's because you can have some more slices. But as soon as you eat enough, then you're not unsaturated anymore. You're going to be saturated where you cannot take any more slices. It's the same story with these uh, solutions. Once you have enough solid dissolved in the given amount of solvent, more solute cannot be dissolved, and that's when you are reached into this dynamic equilibrium, and that particular position is going to be called an saturated solution. 
what that really means. You have more solute present compared to the equilibrium concentration, and as a result, some of that solid will be precipitated. So if I have, like, suppose this cup here, I got some water in there, and if you had more than enough solute added to in, into this particular solvent, you're probably going to have some solute solidified at the bottom here and that's when the rate of dissolution is going to be equal to the rate of uh, recrystallization. When you are at saturated limit you cannot increase the concentration of the solute in that given solution unless you heat it. Now there are going to be times when you call when you reach in a um, situation where you have more solute present in the solvent and that solute is also in the dissolved form which means you're gonna have higher concentration than you really need to have and that particular solution is gonna be called in a super saturated solution now, this doesn't happen a lot of time but it's not uncommon you will see it uh, every now and then and uh, Turns out sometimes the super saturated solutions are fairly stable unless you kind of disturb it and then it's going to start solidifying quickly. Um, if I give an example, let's say you're trying to recrystallize something, sometimes those crystals kind of get stuck to the side of the glass and they don't want to solidify in that particular solution but as soon as you stir that solution or maybe scratch the side of the glass then it's going to start solidifying. Super saturated solutions means you have more solute in there in the dissolved form than you expected so that's going to be your super saturated solution. Now I mentioned that question earlier like how can you increase the solubility of the solid solute in water and the simple answer to that is by heating up or increasing the temperature. And I have some of these graphs here on the left side, so you don't have to memorize any of those, but be able to read that. So if I focus on maybe a couple of those here, so suppose uh, I'm talk I talked about KCL. So on the x-axis, you got the temperature here. And on the y-axis, you got the solubility. And you clearly see here at 0 degrees Celsius, you can still dissolve some KCL. So your KCL is with this pink, pink line here. You can still dissolve some good chunk of KCL, which is like 30 grams of KCL in 100 grams of water. But then as soon as the temperature goes up, the amount of KCL that's going to be dissolved in there will also go up and it usually goes linear. It doesn't really go much compared to some other lines there, but there is still an increase in the solubility of KCL when the temperature goes up. What about uh, maybe taking another example? KNO3 is a good one here, and it's a significant increase in the solubility as the temperature is increased. So maybe at around, uh, if I look at 10 degrees Celsius there, you can dissolve maybe around 16 grams, but then as soon as I go up, maybe go about 40 degrees Celsius, you can almost dissolve 60 grams of KCL in the 100 grams of water. So there is going to be a significant increase in the temperature in the solubility when the temperature goes up. And that holds true when you're dealing with a solid solute. If you're not if you don't have a solid solute then it's not going to be true. For a gas solute, it's actually opposite, and I'll talk about that in a different session. Okay, let's look at this question like how would you really determine if you have a saturated unsaturated or a super saturated solution given in the particular question? It says the solubility of KNO3 at 60 degrees Celsius is 60 grams in 100 grams of water. Okay. I want to be able to go ahead and write that down. 60 grams of KNO3 in 100 grams of water. Instead of 100 grams of water, you could very well have 100 milliliters because the density of water is 1. Now, we got two situations here. The first situation here, I have 10 grams of KNO3 in 15 grams of water at 60 degrees Celsius and no precipitate precipitate appears. So I'm looking at 10 grams of KN3 divided by 15 grams of water. 
And I want to be able to compare that with the solubility definition that we are provided, which is 60 grams over 100 grams of water. But I don't really have 100 grams given here. So one of the best ways to do it is somehow multiply both the denominator and the numerator so that your denominator becomes 100 grams. In that case, it's going to be easier to compare. So then think of a number that you can multiply 15 with so that you get 100. So I think it's going to be a little bit over 6. So 6.67 suppose. If I multiply 6.67 with 15, that gets you about 100 grams. So it's going to be 6.67 and then to be consistent you got to do the same thing on the top so 6.67 and uh, that means uh, 10 times 6.67 is going to be 66.7 grams of KNO3 so now it's going to be easier to compare with though with the definition of the solubility that was given so the definition says or the solubility at that particular temperature says the max KNO3 that you can dissolve in 100 grams of water is 60 grams. But now here you have 66.7. So that means you're over the saturation limit there. And in, in that particular case, you must have some solids appearing. However, the question does specify that there is no solids being form or formed or there's no precipitates being formed. That means this extra 66 minus 7, 66.7 minus 60, which is like 6.6 .6 or 6.7 grams of KNO3, which should have been precipitated, is still staying in the dissolved form. And in that case, that makes it a super saturated solution. All right, I'm going to change this number. 10 to make more sense. Okay, let's look at this next question here. It says you got 10 grams of KNO3 divided by 25 grams of water. So again, I want to go ahead and make sure I have 100 in the denominator so that I can easily compare with the solubility here. So maybe if I multiply both the and both the top and the bottom with four, I get 100 on the denominator there. So 100 grams of water, and that's going to be 40 grams of KNO3. Okay, so clearly it's below your solubility limit because you can dissolve a total of 60 grams of KNO3 in there, but now you have only 40 grams dissolved, so this is going to be a unsaturated solution. So let's look at this next one here. So the next one says if the solution in this part B, okay, so they're talking about this previous part here, is cooled down to 20 degrees Celsius, how much would precipitate, if any? You would be given the solubility at this particular temperature, but it didn't give you that, so I can go back and look up at this uh, a graph here. So you want to make sure you know how to read the graph. So we're looking at 20 degrees Celsius. So at 20 degrees Celsius, we're looking at uh, about, you don't have to be exact, so I would say about 27 grams. So we've got 27 grams of KNO3 would be dissolved in 100 grams of water. So that's your solubility, and that's going to be given to you if the temperature changes, or they will give you the graph. Originally, we have 10 grams of KNO3 and 25 grams of water, so I'm just going to copy that down here. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 100, obviously, So multiply both the bottom and the top by 4, and then again, that's going to give you the same value that we have on the tops. So I'll just go and copy that down. So that means uh, you have 40 grams of KNO3, in that particular case at 20 degrees Celsius, but the max that you can dissolve is going to be only 27. Okay, so the max is 27 grams, but you have 40 grams, so that means how much solid you're going to be precipitating in there, or amount of uh, precipitates 
formed in that case is going to be 40 minus 27 so about 13 grams of KNO3 will precipitate out because you are gone over the saturation limit there so that's how you're going to be identifying the different solutions to be saturated unsaturated or supersaturated. if you have any questions feel free to leave any comments in the section below